Julia Okujax and Julia Okujax. Welcome. And this is Brandit. Jack. Welcome to yet another edition of Brandit. And Brandit is our program. It's a short but punchy program that we come here every Sunday to talk to you about the different elements of branding and why you should be interested in, in branding. Now, the branding could be your business branding. It could be your personal branding. It could be any anything. It could be your your, your products, this stuff, you know. Yeah, it could be anything. You know, it could be it could be this with that what you sell. Yeah, and um, we're going to be talking, and we'll continue talking about personal brands, uh, business brands, things that you create services. Yeah. All of these are brands. All of these are brands, and they 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 can all be sold. The importance of talking about branding is um, that you get to know people. Get to know how to distinguish you from another brand. People get to like you as a brand because they know you, and something endears them to you. And when people like you, they if they can't afford you yet, they bookmark you. Or as I say to myself, I I mark that thing, and then when I have the opportunity. I go get it, you know. So branding eventually leads to the catching the money, you know, and that's what we want. And we want not just people who buy the first time, we want them to buy and keep buying. Now that takes me to where we started off last week. Now, if you joined us for Brand Like a Rockstar, our webinar last week, thank you very much. If you didn't join us, well, there'll be another opportunity because we'll have another function, another activity coming up shortly you know now we chose the name brand like a rock star and people asked me said do you really like rock music yeah i do like some rock music yeah i do i do i like some of the lyrics particularly but i think one thing that we can learn from rock stars is that they usually have larger than life personalities and they're unforgettable anyone remember this anime bullock now anime bullock was tina turner you know, she changed her name to Tina Turner. It was actually her manager who turned her husband, Ike, <clears throat> changed that name. And when she got her divorce from Ike, that was the one thing that she wanted to keep, you know, because that was now her brand. That was her personality. That was Tina Turner kind of comes off the um, the tongue faster than uh, anime Bullock, you know. So rock stars are definitely charismatic. They're gifted. They're unique. They're one of a kind. They create and stay in their lane. You know, not everybody liked Tina Turner's kind of music, but the people that liked her were a lot. Now, if you didn't like her for the way she sang, which was fantastic, you'd like her for her dancing or you'd like her for her dressing. But something would make you like, there were so many layers. And it's like Michael Jackson, so many layers to Michael Jackson, so many layers to Tina Turner, so many layers to Prince, so many layers to Fela, so many. These are these are rock stars, you know, and rock stars are legendary. They're, how would I put it now? Who they are outlives them. I mean, until maybe 20 years, 30, 40 years from now, when you think about reggae, reggae music, I, you can't but call Bob Marley. He didn't start it, but he made a rock star out of it, you know. Yes. So why do we want you to brand with like a rock star? Because we believe that you can create a niche for yourself. You can create um, a look for yourself. You can create a feel for yourself that will endear people to you. And when people are endeared to you, they like you, they want you, they will patronize you, they trust you, the trust element. Now, people could go to Tina Turner concerts or go to Fela concerts or go to the shrine, you know, and expect to be entertained or yabbed, you know. They expect to, to see a show and they got it. So if you went to a Tina Turner concert and all of a sudden what she did was to... Um, start singing reggae. That reggae better heat up very quickly, otherwise people are going to turn around and, and walk away. That is the value of staying on your lane, creating a niche and staying in it, you know. So these are people that couldn't be ignored, you know. And there's, um, we have some local rock stars in the field of music. 
But just so I do not offend anybody, I will not mention them, apart from Fela, who I believe is a global rock star. And also Manu Dibango, another global rock star. You know. So, now this rock star I'm going to talk about is, yes, Alabuku powder. Have you heard of it? Okay. Well, I heard of it from when I was a child. I heard a few jingles. When I was a child, I think there may, may have been a few metal plates. I used to have a lot of metal plates at the time. They used to have a met, a metal plates and advertising things at the time. So I heard about Alaboku powder. I cannot say for sure that I've taken it. I don't think I have. I would have remembered if I had, but not as an adult. But definitely I remember Alaboku powder. For sure, I do. Now, I want to tell you the story of Alabuku. Alabuku powder was founded by a Nigerian pharmaceutical apprentice and an entrepreneur. And what was his name? Jacob Shoboyega Odulete. It was, it was um, he started it in 1918. Now, my math is not very good, but I'm going to try now. 1918, none of us here was alive, for sure. So this is 2023, 1918. Okay, that's at least um, 107, over 100 years. That's over a century. Quietly doing what it has to do. Let me tell you a story. Well, I'll read from. I'll read. I'll read a little bit because I didn't. I didn't have the time to internalize all of this. You know, it started in 1918. When at a time when aspirin, caffeine, headache powder brands were just starting to spring up in the United States of America, you know. Now at that time there was no modern pharmaceutical industry, and only a few Western drugs were imported and distributed in the country by European companies. Now, most of what we relied on, and it, it worked for us, so please don't knock it, was a traditional medicine, which some people call a bow. We, we have it different names, you know. They do different things, and um, they do work. So let's not get let's not get distracted by by herbs and the the whole controversy around it. But Mr. Jacob Shobuega Odulete was born in 1884 in Lagos, and armed with a basic knowledge of European pharmaceutical products. Remember, he was a pharmaceutical apprentice, so he learned some some things there, and also had a knowledge of medical care. He, he he was an apprentice in Abel Kuta, you know. So based on that, he decided to introduce his own brand of aspirin caffeine powders to the um, his fellow Nigerians and to make sure that they were always available and affordable. Now, that is a positioning, a promise that Alapoku maintains still today, that it's available and affordable. You may not find it in the big supermarkets. You may not find it in the big pharmacies. You may, may, you may find it. I'm not sure. I haven't gone looking. Maybe I'll go looking after now, you know, you know, but um, you'll find it where people are doing heavy work, construction work, metal work, um, people who need to, maybe, maybe people who work under the bridges, people who do a lot of manual manual labor, and they do not have the, um, how do I call it? They don't have the luxury of popping to um, paracetamol and going to um, to slip it off or drink water. And stuff. So just take this. This is in powder form, remember? Okay, you don't know. I'm telling you, it was in powder form. Anything that's in powder form or that is dispersible, it works faster. So with this combination, I mean, this is sheer genus, you know, combination of aspirin and caffeine in the right quantities made magic. And he was nicknamed, Mr. Dulate was nicknamed by the his, his fellow Nigerians as Alabuku, which means Blessed Jacob. You know, and he started what would become Alabuku powder from local materials and imported patents drugs, which he brought in from the UK through a trading company. You know, now 
Today, a sachet of Alaboco powder contains 760 milligrams of, okay, I don't think you need to know all of that, but it contains aspirin and it contains caffeine. People mix it with water, but people also take it dry like that and then take water afterwards. And what's the most important thing? It works. What's the most important thing? So it solves a problem. So your brand as a rockstar brand must solve a problem. Number two, your brand as a rockstar brand should stay on its lane. There haven't been many brand extensions for Alabuco, but there has, Alabuco has stayed, you know. There have been a few tweaks to <clears throat> the powder, sorry, the packaging, a few tweaks. There hasn't been much, if any, advertising, you know. So you don't really have to. I mean, this is really, I'm sorry, it's counterintuitive to what I do best, which is help people create um, advertising for their, their brands. But this brand has been able to stay and succeed and thrive without having much advertising because it solves a problem. So that's the first question you have to ask yourself. What problem does my brand solve? Number two, who does it solve it for? Number three, can I keep doing it? Do I know the formula to keeping these people satisfied? Are these people the people, my core audience, those people in my sweet spot, are they people who want to um, be constantly gingered, as we say, excited, titillated by something? You know, that's the thing about our regular rock stars. What they want is, what the... the um, the audience would want would be to be constantly excited by something. Yes, sometimes we want to be constantly excited. I mean, for my dressmakers, I would want them to come up with something new, something exciting, and I'm like, oh, okay, we can do that. But would I want, um, yeah, maybe a better pharmaceutical product here and there, you know, perhaps, perhaps. But if it works, and remember the demographic that I outlined for you. Demographic is those people who do a lot of, um, manual labor and do not have that luxury of just um, maybe too much money on their hands, disposable income on their hands, and also um, luxury of time to take time. I mean, if you're carrying cement bags and you have to, have to, or you're doing factory work and you have to offload this thing. So, this guy, Mr. Dulate, really he honed in on this call. He found a sweet spot and he found, a, he gave them their solution. And I think that is just rock star. Fantastic, fabulous. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know, we can help you do it. We can help you find your sweet spot. We can help you find your core audience. We can help you cut through the, the fluff. There's a lot of fluff that excites us, all of us, me included. Many of us are 10-speed bikes, but perhaps what we need to be known for is Plus three speeds, and that's fine. And we'll get where we want to go. Yeah. So we'll help you. Um, you can check out our brand description document. It's in the description and also pinned to the comments. And you can find it on our link tree, the link in our Julia Jacks Consulting Instagram handle. And I'll ask you to like us, follow us, and um yeah, we're going to have some more, some new um, announcements coming up very soon. We have Brand Lab that will come up very soon and other things too. So please stay with us and um, keep shining while you do it. Take care and um, go make that money. Bye. Bye.